Hello everyone and welcome to Soloed Quest. This is Ed and I welcome you to a new solo playthrough here on the channel. This time around we're going to play a full game of Donning the Purple, at least in the solo mode. Uh, so Donning the Purple uh, just recent, recently uh, reached backers. This was a Kickstarter game, it is published by uh, Tom Pet Games. Uh, in Donning the Purple we will be taking on the role of the Roman Emperor. And we will be facing a lot of adversities, and I do mean a lot, during four years of the Roman Empire. So the game will be played during, uh, well, four rounds, I guess, for full turns in, uh, in each of those four uh, turns. There will be eight phases, and I'll, I'll explain all of the, the, the phases in a while. Um, yeah, we will be facing a lot of stuff. We will be facing against the Roman Senate. We will be facing, well, kind of against, the, not the people, but we will have to feed our people. We will be facing um, adversaries, enemies, uh, basically barbarians that will be invading our Roman Empire. And we will have to defend the Empire from those as well. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that is going to be thrown against us. And we will have to prevail and, uh, well, reach the end of those four years and be alive and also beat the Senate in terms of victory points. So there's a lot of stuff to keep track of and a lot of stuff, well, not to keep track of, but a lot of stuff to um, prevent. We will be facing a lot, a lot of adversities, uh, but yeah, we will have to prevail against all of them if we want to be the winners here on Donning the Purple. So the game is pretty much already set up. I just didn't set up the random stuff that um, is done during each game. So the setup, uh, in terms of our our legionnaires is always the same. So this is our map right here of the Roman Empire. Um, just to give you a very quick explanation of the solo setup. Um, so, you, well, we have all these uh, decks of cards right here. So we have our plot uh, cards. We have our event cards. So our plot cards are basically cards that we will be drawing that will give us um, some maybe some powers, some free actions sometimes. Basically, uh, good stuff. The stuff that is usually good for us. Events are cards that will be drawn in one of the phases right here, in one of those eight phases. Uh, and those are bad. That, that's all bad stuff right here on this event deck. There's nothing good for us as the Roman Emperor. Uh, and then there's the forum cards, which we will be draw. We will be drawing one per turn as well, one per year, and uh, they are good stuff. So they are extra actions that we can do besides the ones on our um, player mat that I will be showing you in a second. Um, but those are all good stuff as well. So we have our decks right here on the left. Then we place this token right here. So this is the the grain price track. Um, the grain price will start, this is uh, what marks the grain price. So it's going to start at two, okay? So that's two currency per grain. Um, and on solo, it can never go to one. So we place this token right here so to prevent this to reach one. So this is the minimum, this is two. This might go up, it might go down, but it's going to start at two, which is the minimum. And then we have here our happiness track, which starts at number five as you can see. And this is pretty much what it's going to dictate at the end of the year, the, the victory points we get, the bonus victory points. So as you can see, the this little happy face, the theater face right here, is on uh, the number one track, the one victory point limit, okay? As soon as it passes this limit right here, it goes on number two, and we would get uh, two victory points at the end of the year. And this goes all the way up to five. If we're at maximum, Happiness, we're getting five victory points at the end of the year. So we definitely want to go and get the, a lot of happiness during um, our turns. How can we get this? Well, we can feed the people, um, feed all the people, we will get happiness. We can build some aqueducts, we'll get happiness. I'll explain that in a bit. Here we have our production track. So this is basically just, if we build buildings, uh, we will be placing them right here on this track. Only four buildings will be built per year, okay? Uh, so this just dictates the order in which they are built. Uh, in, in solo play, it's not really an important track. Uh, in multiplayer, there's ways to um, change the order of the buildings, so you might screw the other player uh, and place his buildings right here that last on the production track. But in terms of solo, we're the only ones building, so uh, it's not that important of a track to uh, look at, because everything we build well, at least if we don't build more than four per turn, they're all going to be uh, placed in the player mat, uh, the player board, sorry. The game board, I mean, <laughs> that is this one right here, this beautiful board. So what do we have here um, besides those tracks? We also have the Senate track. 
and this is the the track that the the game will use to score its own victory points so we will be facing a lot of stuff as i said we will have some barbarians advancing on the board that is going to try to reach capitals and i'll explain those in a bit but besides the enemies we will also have to be uh, on the lookout for the senate because the senate wants to grab power from us and how do they do that so every single year during those four years we're going to be placing two of these tokens right here on the track and i can do that right away so we'll be placing two in here each year and then at the end of the year he will uh, the senate will gain victory points based on the number of senate senators they have okay these are bribed senators so at the end of the first year he will get two victory points if i do nothing about this track then on the next year he's getting more two senators so at the end of that second year he's getting four victory points okay and so on and so on so he will be placing more senators and getting each each year he will be getting uh, more victory points at the end of that year so we will have to take uh, a look at this one as well try to maybe get some senators out of here so that he gets less victory points per year uh, so yeah that's one of the tracks we definitely want to pay attention to and then we have our little tokens here in case we also want to bribe some senators Let's say I want, wanted to bribe a senator right now. I would have to bribe the next one. And this value right here, this is the coins, the money I would have to pay to bribe him. So I would pay three coins and then bam, I would have a senator. And I would have the rightmost senator, which is actually very important for one of the phases. And I will explain, uh, explain it in a second. What else do we have? Well, we have our board, our game board. Um, so let's just take a very quick look at the game board. Um, so basically... The game board is divided in four regions. So there's this red region right here in which the capital, which is the, the star uh, province right here, this is called, these are called provinces. So each individual, individual region is divided in six provinces. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, and each of the regions has a capital, which is the one with the start. In this case is Hispania. And as you can see, each province has a number right here, okay? So the enemies will be coming. Uh, we will roll a die to see on which province they, they are going to spawn. Uh, this is going to happen on every single year. So four times during the game. And they will be moving uh, towards the capital. So let's say they spawned on number four right here. They would then move to number three and then to number two. So they would move one, um, one region above or below, depending on the number they spawn and where the capital is, and they will try to get to that capital. So if capital right here is number two, so if they go above two, they will drop uh, each, uh, each movement, they will drop in, in a number. So this is six, they would go to five, then to four, then to three, and then try to enter this capital right here to conquer it. If they try to enter with a military power uh, that is greater than mine, then they would conquer this, um, this capital. They would remove my legions and they would be placed here. Um, so when I say military power, I have two right here. They would have to have a total of three or more to conquer this. If they have the same power, if there's two enemies trying to enter, they can't. Okay, I can prevent them with these two legions that are placed right here. Um, so yeah, there's four regions. This one doesn't really count. It's a region as well, but they can't enter it. This is Roma. Okay, they can't enter it. This is our player pawn. Uh, we can also use it to... Um, so just like the regions, uh, sorry, the enemies move, also the legions move as well, and so can we move. Uh, so the legions each have a power of one, so this combined is a power of two, and our little pawn here has a power of two as well. So if there's only one enemy here, we can also move there and um, kill him off. If there's two enemies, we can't. We always have to, uh, either the, uh, both the enemies and us, we need a military power greater than the one we are attacking in order to destroy them. Um, so yeah, we have another region right here in which the capital is Thracia. It is number six. So on this region, they are going to be moving uh, up on the numbers to try to get to this capital. In here, this is the capital. This is Punctus. And uh, there we go. And on this one, we have the capital, which is Egypt. Okay, so we always place two legions on each capital. That's part of the setup. And that's always the same. Our pawn is always placed here on Roma. Okay, and we always place one estate on Roma as well. These estates basically give us uh, five coins, five money at the end of the year when we collect taxes. Okay, that's what the estates do. 
And yeah, that's it. That, that, that's the setup on the board, uh, except for the random setup, but that's part of the phases, so we will do that in a second when we start playing. And then we have our player board right here. So uh, Dunning the Purple is a bit of a worker placement and also a bit of King of the Hill, because we will have to defend these provinces right here. We need to have legions in there, because we lose if the enemies control all four um, of the capitals, okay? If there's enemies on four of the, on these four, we lose the game immediately. We also lose the game if we uh, place all of the enemies on the game board. There's 28 tokens. So if this is overrun by enemies, we also lose the game. And we also lose the game if the Senate has more victory points than us at the end of that said game. So we do need to, as I said, we have to keep a lookout for the enemies and we do have to keep a lookout for the Senate as well. We also need to have a lookout again for other stuff. This is. There's so much stuff going to be thrown at us. Um, uh, we will have to keep a lookout for food as well. We will have to be feeding our people during each of those years. And I don't know if you've noticed, but some provinces, so this one, uh, it has the star, it's the capital, this one has only name, but there's one on each region that has this little symbol right here. This is the grain that this province pro um, provides, okay? So this one provides three grain, as long as there's no famine on this region, we might place famine tokens here, which means the region didn't produce anything that year. And uh, it, it can't have any enemies on the province as well. So we need to prevent famine and we need to prevent enemies being in here so that we can get gather grain, okay, from the regions so that we can then feed our people as well. If we can't feed them, the happiness track is gonna go down here. If we can feed them, it's gonna go up, which is nice. They will be fed and happy. There you go. So then let's just take a look at our player mat. There's a lot of stuff to explain. Um, it, it does seem like there's a lot of stuff, to, well, there is a lot of stuff that we need to look out, but it's not a super complicated game at all. It's actually, Pretty, uh, it's actually pretty fast to play, I would say. Um, there's just, you know, a few things that I need to explain to you so that you understand everything that we will be doing in this solo playthrough. So, we will be playing as the Emperor on the solo game. Uh, on the multiplayer, this, um, there will be, there are four player boards, uh, three player boards, I'm sorry. So there's one for the Emperor, another for the Senate, and another for the heir of the Emperor. Uh, but those rules are going to change during the game. You are not being, uh, in multiplayer, you are not uh, fixed as the Emperor for the, the remainder of the whole game. At least, well, uh, you shouldn't be, <laughs> unless the other players are really um, dormant you won't be Emperor, you will be probably assassinated during the game. But on the solo, we're Emperor for the whole game and we have to just try to keep our that position in our family. We might get assassinated, that's okay, it doesn't matter as long as we have an heir um, in our family to become the emperor, okay? So that in that way we won't lose. We only lose if we die and uh, we don't have any heir yet in our family. So, let me show you the actions we can do. So th these are actions that are um, open to um, the player that would have this board, in case this case it's us. So. We start with 10 stamina right here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. So we are going to be doing a maximum of 5 actions per year. And we will be using this, this stamina right here. So we place it on one action. And then we just do that action. We can use 5 of these stamina tokens per year. Uh, once we use them, they will go into the used stamina space here. And there's certain ways to get them back so that we can use them on the next years. So the actions we can do are... I'm just going to show you these quickly and then maybe um, talk about the phases as we are playing. I guess, th I think it's going to be easier to, to understand as we are playing if I explain stuff. So just to, to take a quick look at the things we can do. So we can, we can have a maximum of three cards in our hand for now. Uh, and when I say a maximum, that's the plot cards. These are the ones we are going to take in our hand. We actually start the game with one plot card. So I'm going to draw that and I'll place it here next to our hidden agenda, which I'll show you as we move along. So the actions we can do are to move our pawn. So our pawn has a strength of two, like, two, like I said, and it can move a maximum of three spaces. So this is good to clear up a uh, few spaces where there are enemies and then that we don't want them to uh, maybe move or group up in certain uh, regions. Then we can also bribe a senator which is the, the action I already talked about. Let's say we want to place a senator right here on the Senate. Uh, we can 
pay the amount that is here on the left most available space and we just place one of our senator tokens. Um, so how, why do we want to do this? Because at the end of each year we're going to, the, the senate is going to try to kill us, okay? And if the senate, uh, the, the rightmost senator, if it's one of the red player uh, or the, the game senator, it's going to have plus one to the, that assassination, uh, assassination attempt. So it, it might be good to have the rightmost senator at that time and also at the end of the game as you can see there's victory points um, to be gained for the person who has the rightmost senator so at the last turn we really want to have the rightmost senator definitely now what else can we do we can do some assassination we can assassinate the senator which is to remove one of these and we will definitely be doing that we pay five gold and we roll a die on a two to a six we kill it on a one we miss we can spend plot cards to um, increase that uh, the, the value on our die. As you can see, the plot cards, they have a text, their ability, and they also have a strength right here on the top right, uh, bottom right, sorry. That strength can be used to uh, enhance our assassination roles. We can also assassinate the Emperor, but in this case we won't be doing it. Uh, it's only used on multiplayer, since on solo we are the Emperor. We don't want to kill ourselves. Or at least, well, we don't usually want to kill ourselves. But then, what else do we have? We can build estates. This costs three gold each. Uh, we put our little stamina token here and we place the estate on the production line and so that it will be built during that turn. And then this estate will give us five more gold coins. Uh, it might not be gold, called gold, but five currency coins, I don't know, uh, at the end of that turn. What else? We have monuments as well. We can build monuments. Now, these won't be placed on the board. Uh, oh, by the way, the, the, both the estates and the aqueducts, there can only be one uh, building per province. So if this, let's say this capital had a building, I can't place another building on that same province, th that capital. I would have to place it on an adjacent province or somewhere else on the board, okay? I can't build two buildings on the same space. Okay, continuing on, um, these are the monuments. These monuments don't go on the game board, so these, when we build them, they actually go here on our player board uh, and they unlock uh, certain abilities. So our first monument is going to be unlocking plus one strength to our pawn. So as we build this, our pawn will move with a movement of three, but then it will have a strength of three as well, which is very, very good. I really like this ability. I usually build it. Uh, as fast as I can. Then we have this one, the second monument is going to give us one more to our uh, d6, to our die, uh, every time we do, we roll for assassinations. So that is for the senator, so if we have this we always can always kill the senator, we don't need to roll. And we also um, have one more, when they try to assassinate us at the end of the year, so they, they, uh, if they have the rightmost senator, they had plus one, remember? With this, we negate that plus one, which means that we have a plus one to our defense as well, okay? So this is a good thing to have as well. And right here, the last monument will just give us two victory points, which is nice, okay? It's not a bad ability, let me tell you. There, there aren't that many victory points to be gained during the whole game. Uh, okay, and then we have, so this is kind of like the player abilities, and then this is the emperor ability. So the, this board right here is just for the emperor where he can do some a few more actions. So he can choose an heir again, play, uh, pay, uh, pay 15, 15 uh, gold coins, yep, and uh, we can choose an heir which means we can place this token right here and have it here. That's good to have because if we die we just take our heir token, we place it right here again uh, we recover all of our stamina and we get a minus one victory point. That's fine, okay? Uh, if we do die and we don't have this choose air, the game ends immediately. So we definitely want to uh, buy this air as soon as we can. What else can the Emperor do? It can move legions or uh, a group for a maximum of two spaces. So I can either move one legion or a group of legions for two spaces to uh, kill off enemies if I need to. I can also train legions, so um, this is two gold pieces each, and I can place two uh, legions on capitals, okay, as long as there aren't enemies there. So I could place one legion here, one region, legion here, I can uh, spread them around, they don't have to be on the same space, and that is two gold coins per legion. I'm going to go call it gold, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the currency. Uh, moving on. 
So we can also build an aqueduct. This is very good to have. Why? So if we have an aqueduct, let's say here, and, and this is probably where I'll be placing it if I build one uh, on Egypt. That means that every time there's a famine on that region, you won't be placing famine, okay? Famine prevents that region to, from producing um, the uh, the corn. Is it corn? Uh, the grain, sorry. It, pro it won't produce grain unless you have an aqueduct. If you have an aqueduct, we won't be placing famine. And you can guarantee that this region is going to produce six grain. And this is the, the province that uh, provides the most grain. So we definitely want an aqueduct here so that we can get those six grain on every turn. Also, when you build an aqueduct, you gain three happiness right here on the happiness track. So aqueducts are great to have as well. And that's it. This is just a grain counting space so that we know how many grain we collected that turn. Uh, and yeah, that, that's about it. So uh, for solo setup, you, uh, re you get f 20. Uh, gold coins. So these are 20 coins that you get. Uh, we also draw a random hidden agenda on every single game. So these um, are bonus points that we can get at the end of the game. So these will kind of change up what we will try to be doing as well at, in the, this game so that we can get the more most victory points possible. Uh, so we got this one, hidden agenda. At the end of the game we get two victory points if we placed all our monuments in our player mat, which is usually something I try to pursue so it's okay uh, and we get one uh, more victory point if we have a minimum of two senators in the senate I don't usually have this uh, I don't know if I'll pursue it or not it's just one victory point we will see uh, I also I get minus one if I have no monuments on my player map that's not going to happen for sure I, I will have one at least so this minus one is not definitely not going to happen uh, unless everything goes super wrong and super south, but that's unlikely. And we also, <coughs> sorry, we also draw one random plot card. So we can play this at probably, well, mostly at any time. We can take a look at the top card on two of the decks, place the cards you looked at at the bottom of their decks if you want, and then we'll draw one more plot. Okay, so we can either play this for the ability or we can play it to add strength. We can add strength, like I said, to our dice if we try to assassinate. Or we can also try to add strength to our pawn when we move. So let's say this is two, uh, three strength. Our pawn right now is two strength. If there's four enemies here, I would need this total strength of five to uh, defeat them. So I could actually use this plot card to give plus three strength to my pawn for a total of five. And then move and defeat all those four enemies. Okay, so that's an alternative way to use these plot cards. Um, they can also be used to defend ourselves when we try to be, when they, people try to assassinate us, we can then add this strength to our defense, just like this pip here on this monument. And that's about everything for the setup. Um, I think we're ready to go. I will then explain all of the phases as we are playing the game. I think that's enough for explanations right now of rules of review. So we're ready to go. Uh, so let's start with the first phase right here, which is, as you can see, the incoming enemies. So in this phase, what do we do? We place two senators right here on the Senate. That is done already. We already did that while I was explaining the track. And then we place the enemies right here on the board, which are the, those barbarian tribes I talked about. So we roll one of these little D6s. Let me actually place this right here. So this is going to choose the province in which they are going to appear. So we roll the die. This is province number two. So on every single region, we are going to be placing two enemies on region, uh, on province two, okay? So on this region, province two is actually the capital. That means that they won't spawn there because there, there are only two enemies. There's two legions here, so they won't spawn, okay? So that was region one, no enemies. On region two, uh, we do have no, we don't have any legions on number, uh, province number two, so we place two enemies in there, okay? Then on region number three, there we go, this is the number two, we put it right here. And then on region number four, where is province number two? There we go, we place it right here. Now, after we place the enemies, they are also going to be moved. So we check every region. Uh, this one has no enemies. This one has enemies. So they move one space closer to the capital. So these are on space number two. The capital is the space number six. So they are going to be moving up uh, in, in, in order number. So this is two, they are going to be moved to region number three. There we go. 
unless there were legions here. If I had a legion, they wouldn't be able to move because they wouldn't be able to conquer it. This, like on this example, they are in region number two, they want to go to region number one, they can't because there's legions, there are legions defending it. So they won't be able to move there. And then right here on region four, there we go, they are on province number two, they will move to province number three, try to get to province five, which is the capital. So that's the incoming enemy's phase. We will be doing exactly this on every single turn. Now we have number phase number two, which is the harvest grain. Okay, on this phase, we are just going to roll one of these D4 dice, which is going to tell us on where where is where there's a famine on this year. Every single year, year we're going to try to add a famine token. Um, unless there's an aqueduct. If the, we have an aqueduct built, then we won't place a, uh, a famine on that region. But for now, there's no aqueduct, so there's going to be a famine for sure. We just are hoping not to get a famine here on region 4 because, again, it gives us 6 grain, which is very, very nice. So, we roll it, it's region 2. There we go. So, thank God. So, we pick up one of these famine tokens. We place it right here. That means that this region isn't producing any grain. These three grain right here, we're not getting it. That means that we will count the rest of the grain that we get. So this one produces, there's no enemies here and there's no, no famine in the region. So that's three grain and then three more from Roma, which always produces, that's six. There's a famine, we don't get one from here. Uh, on this region, it's clear as well, so that's nine. And then this one is clear as well, so that's 15 grain for us, which is a good number. So we place one token on the 10 and another grain token on the five, which makes a total of 15, as you might have guessed. There we go, so that's that's a good, good grain to have. We will have to feed every single province that doesn't have an enemy at the end of the turn. So at the end of the, the year, sorry. So let's say that, that the board would stay like this. There's three, re three provinces with uh, enemies. There's a total of 25, so it's uh, three less, that would be 22. So we have 15 grain, we would need seven more grain. We would have to buy the grain from this, uh, with this price, with this track. So it's good to have money to buy the, the remaining grain that we need to feed all of our people. Well, unless we don't want to feed them, but we usually do want to. So that's the harvest grain phase again. Simple stuff, let's move on to the worst phase of the, the whole game, which is the draw cards. It does seem like a good stuff, right, to draw cards. No, it is not. It is horrible, because now we're going to draw from the event deck. We're going to draw a total of five event cards, which is, well, stuff that happens during the Roman year. And it's all bad stuff. And it's not just, you know, a little bit of bad stuff. It's horrible stuff, really. It's just everything here is bad, 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 bad. So <laughs> I'm going to actually use my plot card right now, I think. Um, yeah, I think I'll use it right, right away. So my plot card, what it does is it allows me to look at the top card on two of the decks. And uh, it allows me to uh, place the cards you looked at at the bottom of their decks if you want. And I can draw one extra plot card. Hmm. So I'm, th I'm just thinking, do I want to use this on the event deck? Mm, maybe not, because the events are all bad. It's not like I, I'll be doing anything extra good. So here's what I'm doing. I'm using this plot card. So I'll take a look at the top card on two of the decks. So I'll take a look uh, at the forum and the plot deck because I'll be drawing another plot card right away. So I'll be looking at this one. And why am I doing this? So I, I, we will be drawing five events during this phase and then one forum card that will be uh, an extra action that we can do for the whole reminder of the whole game, okay? So the forum cards are really important and there's some really good stuff in here. So I'm going to take a look at this one. Remove negative points, okay. So I would get an extra action that I could do every single turn that would allow me to remove minus one, minus two or minus three points. Um, this isn't the one I like the most. Although it's good to have at the end, I mean, it's, it's not a brilliant one. So honestly, I'm going to be placing this at the bottom. I'd rather have something more useful during the whole game that helps me during the game itself, not just at the end for the, the scoring. And I'll also be looking at the plot card here. 
all of your estates generate double the amount of money this year. Although this has a lot of strength, it's really not helpful right now. So honestly, it goes to the bottom as well. That's it. So there we go. And now I draw one plot card. Move. Okay, move the grain price one space up or down. This one is good to have because th this is one of the important things we want to keep on the lowish side because there's a lot of money to be spent if the, go the, the grain is too pricey. So this is actually good. It will keep the, the grain price at minimum if need be. It also uh, adds to strength if we need to add it to our pawn or to a roll. Okay, well, I've used my plot card. Uh, so let's draw the five events which are going to be horrible for sure. So there we go, we start with hordes of enemies. <laughs> we roll this die to decide the target region. We then place one enemy on each province in that region. Okay, there we go. So let's see where they are going to be appearing. They are appearing on region four, there you go. So one enemy on each of the provinces. So that's one here, one here. Uh, one here. I always tremble when I see region 4 come up because this 6 grain is so important. I, it's like the, the one thing you don't really want to lose. Okay, so that's done. This was, yeah, this was the first event of the year. Not too bad, but things might escalate quickly here. If this starts to move the enemies into the, the capital, things will go south really fast. So let's see. Earthquake. Ooh. Roll this die again to decide the target region. In that region, we remove all buildings and add one famine. We remove one unit from each province. Players with a pawn in the target region lose two stamina. So that's good because Roma will never come up in this rule. So we won't lose that stamina. So, okay, region four. Well, that cleared a lot of enemies quickly. So yeah, we rule this to decide. Uh, okay, we place a famine. That's fine for now because we already got the grain out of our region. And what else? We remove all buildings. There's no buildings in there yet, which is good. So we don't lose that. And remove one unit from each province. Players with a pawn. Okay, so one unit from each province is going to be removed. That means that this has been cleared quite quickly, actually. So there we go. We also remove one of ours and one from here. There we go. And this goes back into the supply. All right, so that was two events. This was both good and bad, because I kind of want to clear up enemies, because they give us rewards. Um, so this wasn't that great, I gotta say. Um, I, this might have actually been bad, if, I, if I'm to be honest. The Praetorians guards want more money. The Emperor loses stamina equal to the current year unless he pays 9 gold. Nope, I'll just use my stamina. Lose it. So that's one uh, stamina that I lose because it's just the first year. So that's just fine. Okay, the year dies. Uh, this one we won't be um, using it right now. We will be shuffling back because no one has the year. This says if no player is the year, shuffle this card back into the event and draw a new event. So I'll put this here on the side and draw another one. So there's only three uh, yet. Oh, again, this one. We lose stamina equal to the year unless we pay nine. Okay, let's lose the stamina then. I'm not paying nine just to save up one stamina. That's not going to happen. So that's four events. And the final one is the year dies again. Jesus, we will have to shuffle this. And there we go. Another earthquake. Oh, boy. Okay, so let's rule this again. There's There wasn't... Okay, region one. So what happens here? We place a famine, remove one unit from each province. Okay. Okay, so that's it. We remove one of our legions. We place a famine. So these events were actually pretty bad, I gotta say. Because I actually want enemies on the board uh, so that I can get rewards from defeating them. And there's barely any enemies on the board. That's really actually bad, I gotta say. I'm not a fan of how the board ended up after this. So I'll just give uh, the event tech a quick shuffle, put the air dice cards right back in there. Uh, but before I do that, let me just finish up this phase by drawing our forum card. So this will be a, uh, an additional action that we will be able to do during the game. So I'll be placing it right here. And this, what I got was for the rest of the game, 
draw one more plot at the end of your turn and get plus one to your hand limit. Okay, this one is good. I like this one. So at the end of our uh, the next phase, as you can see, this is the player actions. Once we do all of our uh, five actions, we would get one plot card. But if we place pawn uh, stamina here, we are getting more than one plot card per year, which is nice actually. I like I like this card. Uh, plot cards are usually very useful, so that's that's good to have. So, this phase is done, we are moving on to the player actions, but before we do, let me just shuffle up the air dice right back here on the event deck. Okay, so, we have five actions, um, I guess, well, first of all, I, I think I'll try to clear the board here and try to get rid of these enemies, um, because clearing enemies actually lets you roll these dice right here, so these dice will either give us plot cards, additional plot cards that we can draw, it can give us, if we get this symbol, uh, we can recover uh, used stamina, or if we get these little numbers here, we, this is uh, the amount of money we're getting. And we roll one die for each of the enemies we destroy. So it's a good way, I mean, you can invest in legions and then you'll probably get the, that investment back once, once you start clearing those enemies. And also it's going to give us one happiness for each province that we clear, okay? I didn't explain it actually, but if the happiness goes up all the way down to the skull, we die, okay? So uh, we don't want it to go uh, too low. There's, uh, like, the first turn is always the turn where you want to do more stuff. I was actually very happy to have one enemy on each of these provinces. That would mean that I, my pawn would be able to move there and I would get one happiness for each province with only one enemy. That would be a lot of happiness, but that damn earthquake kind of ruined those plans. So right now, I think I'm just going to... Actually, it's in, one important thing to do is to do some math and see how much money you have and how much grain you have and uh, how much mo how many people you will have to feed. So if I clear up these two enemies, um, that means that there's going to only be one province that I won't have to feed, which means I will need to feed 24 provinces. I have 15 grain, so that's 9 uh, provinces, nine grain I will have to buy, which is a total of, well, it's two per grain, so it's 18 gold. I will have, I, I will need to have 18 gold to feed everyone um, at the end of this year. And I, ha I only have 20 here. So it means I, I won't, I, I can't spend too much money. So that's bad. Um, hmm. So honestly, I'm going to spend money to upgrade legions and see if I can get money back from killing off the enemies. If I can't feed everyone, then that's too bad. I'll try to feed them on the next uh, the next turn. Yeah, I'll probably won't be able to feed everyone. That's that's a shame. Oh well. So let's actually do our first action then. Uh, pick up one of these. We can do five. Remember, and I'm going to train some legions. So uh, it's two gold per legion. So I think I'll just place, I'll place one, that's two, three, four, and I'll place them right here as well, five, six, and seven, eight. Okay, so that's eight money, eight coins, I'm spending five and getting two back. There we go. Okay, so that's done. Now, I can move my legions, um, and I'm going, to do, do, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to move them, and I'll move these first. And I'll move them right here. That's one space. Actually, no, yeah. I'll move them one space and then one space back. So they, they can move two spaces. I could go one, two. You can move along these lines. I could go one, two here. But I'll go one and then go back to the capital to secure it. So I cleared two enemies. That means it's one province cleared. So the happiness goes up one space. And I get to roll two of these reward dice. So let's see what we get from killing off these two. Actually having two fours would be very nice right now, which I would get my investment back with just one of the fights. So I got four and a plot card. Okay, that's fine. So that's four and I get to draw one plot card. So I got, received five money. Okay, th this is not bad. Not bad actually. Okay, so that's it. Now, these guys are cleared. I'm going to move the other legion as well. You can place, uh, there's no limit to the number of action, number of times you can do the same action, okay? I'm going to, to do the same with this legion. I'm moving it here and then moving it back, okay? So that, that's two more enemies. So this is gonna go up once more and I get to roll the, the two dice. Uh, there's a maximum of four dice that you can roll per province, okay? So if there's like 10 enemies here, I would just roll four at maximum. 
But in this case, we roll two. So let's see what we get. We got six gold coins. There we go. So we do have our 18 and we have four coins to spare, which is not too shabby. Um, so I'm definitely putting one of my stamina here so that I draw one more plot card at the end of my turn and get one plus one to my hand limit. Now, do I want to spend this? I think I do. I want this five money because, well, I've done four actions already, right? Yeah. So that's five, 10. Yeah, I do want that happiness. Now, here's the thing. Do I want an aqueduct right away? I'm not sure if I do. I'm scared of losing this region. Well, I can put an echo that somewhere else. I don't have to put it here. I mean, I'm not obliged to do so. Um, maybe I should have put in one more legion here. I guess I should have. Oh, well, too late for that. Uh, so for where do I spend my fifth action? So I can either, here's what I'm thinking. I can either, if I place one echo, I'll actually get, I'll pass this threshold and actually get um, three victory points at the end of the turn. If I don't build an aqueduct, I can remove one senator. That's, well, that's one less victory point for him. Not that it's amazing. I would also love to get me a monument. I would love to get me a monument as well. Um, hmm, so what am I doing here? Because I will, I will need to have these monuments at the end of the game. So it's either... Yeah, but I think... I don't know how... It's one victory point right now, which might matter. Honestly, it might matter. So, huh. Decisions, see, yeah. It's not like the game is complicated, but there's a lot of decisions to be had here. There really are. Um, so I think, I mean, Aqueduct would give me. I think I'm, I'm not going to build the Aqueduct just yet. Because this might really be handy to have one more strength on my player pawn. So, and, and it's going to work for here. And the, why? Because there's events that actually stack up a lot of famine. And the Aqueduct will give me three happiness and remove three, uh, two famine from one region. So, honestly, I might actually need... Well, there's three Aqueducts to build. But, yeah, it's not like I'm building a lot of them. So, I'll actually build the monument. So, that's going to be my final action. I'm actually building this monument right here. I'm going to place it here. And as much as I would love to build an aqueduct, maybe this was greedy, but I think this is going to pay off. This is a lot of extra cards that I will be drawing. So I think that's, that's very handy to do. So I, I'll have to pay five gold to build this monument right here. There we go. So I'm at 15, 16, 17. If I had one more, I wouldn't have to waste this plot card, but uh, I will have to, I guess. Well, actually, I don't have to, now that I look at it, because I'll get two victory points uh, just the same. So maybe I won't, maybe I'll actually keep the, no, but I will have to play a plot. No, my hand limit is a four. Actually, I'll keep this plot card for now. I guess I will. So that is done. Those are my five actions. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So at the end of all of my actions, what I do is I gather all of the stamina that I used on my board and I put it here. Forum cards are never recovered. The stamina that you put on a forum card is always going to stay there. So while this stamina right here is, we are able to get it back into the um, unused spot, the forum stamina will stay here forever. If we ever run out of stamina here, we die, okay? So we don't want to uh, run out of stamina here and we want, we, we want to get this back somehow. We will see if we can do so successfully. Um, so yeah, that's it. Now it's we draw one plot card. We will draw one, but since we have one uh, of our pawns here, that means we draw two plot cards. So let's see what we got here. So I got place a free estate. Okay, I like this. I'm going to use this one right, right away. And place one or two of your unused stamina on a face-up forum. Okay, so I'm using this right away, actually. For sure, because uh, this estate is going to give us uh, five gold every single turn at the end of every single year. 
it's an extra five, okay? Unless it gets destroyed, of course. If it gets destroyed, well, then too bad. But yeah, I'm going to do this right away. So I'm placing an estate. Where am I placing it? I will do so. I'll guess I'll place it here. Let's hope this is not a bad choice to do. Uh, yeah, that's it. So this was the player actions. There we go. Uh, no, actually, the, the cards... Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. It doesn't... I'm sorry. It places on the production, not on the board uh, just yet. Because this is the phase where we place buildings. The... well, right after our actions. So now we decide where this, this stuff goes. So the monument, well, it goes on our player mat. Now our pawn has three strength. And the estate, well, we are going to place it right here. Okay, that's cool. Next, what do we have? We have the distribute food phase. So yeah, now we have to pay to give grain to our people. So there's 25 provinces. We don't, don't need to feed this one because uh, it's occupied by enemies. So we need to, to feed 24 total provinces. We have 15 gold, uh, grain. So that's, that leaves us with nine provinces to be fed. So we need a total of 18 grain for each provinces we can't feed, we are going to move this track to the left. Um, so, either I pay 18 grain right now to feed those 9 provinces, which I can't, I have 10, 15, 16, 17. Uh, that, that means I would feed, I, I could feed these 16, yeah, 16. I would just move, uh, there would be one province left to feed and I would move this to the left just one space. If I am able to feed all of them, then I move this one space to the right. Now, I don't really know what to do here. Do I feed them all or not? I mean, it's not like I'm going to... Well, I'm actually going to need this, this plot card. So honestly, because I will need to defend myself. So honestly, I'm not going to feed them. I'll just spend 16 right now. I'm sorry, people of the Roman Empire. I'm very sorry, but I will spend just 16, okay? Which means I'm feeding eight uh, additional provinces. But that, there's one that isn't being fed, so I will have to move this one space to the left. That's okay. We have one coin left. And I kind of, well, I don't want, I, I'm, I'm going to have to defend myself from an assassination attempt. And I, I really like the ability on these cards. So I'd rather spend this one to defend myself, to add to my defense roll. So that's the reason I'm not spending this to get five money. Okay, just so you are clear on why I, I am doing this. Okay, so the distribute food is done. Now, the collect taxes phase is beginning. This is phase number seven. So on this phase, the Senate is going to get its victory points, which means it's going to get two victory points this turn. There we go. One, two. Uh, and we collect our taxes. Our taxes are uh, incoming from regions where there is no famine. So this region four and the region one will not be providing any taxes. Apart from that, we get uh, money from every single province that isn't occupied by enemies, which in this case is, well, all six here and all six here. So that's 12. One more from this province, that's 13. Okay, so we get 13 cash. Let me get that. So, oops, five, 10, and 13. Okay, there we go. And then we get five, go, uh, five coins from each estate we have on the board. We have two, so that's 10 more cash. There we go. So we have a little bit more money than we started with, although it's not that much. I wish I had some more. Money is really important. You, you need money for so much stuff, um, but oh well. Okay, that, it, it's a shame that we got um, these two famines on different regions it's really a shame oh well oh no sorry we have a famine here as well i sorry 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 i didn't spot this one so actually we only okay let's correct this so we only get five uh, six seven and then ten more so that's seven so that's six less yeah so we got 17 yeah jesus christ we're really short on cash here how did we get so much famine jesus christ Okay, so yeah, that was pretty bad then. Um, this turn is going to be awful as well, Jesus Christ. 
So we've collected the taxes, now it's the end of the year. So uh, the end of the year is going to start with an assassination attempt. So the Senate is going to try to get us out of the power and we are going to draw one plot card, okay? The strength of that plot card is the strength of the assassination attempt and they are going to add one more if they have the right most senator and they do, okay? So it's going to be this card plus one. Now, I, ha I can defend myself. Uh, I would defend with plus one if I had this monument. I don't have it yet. So I'll just play this card, okay? Which means I defend myself with the strength of three, right here. That's it. I defend myself with a strength of three. So let's see how, for how much they try to attack me. The, the difference in strength is the stamina that I'm going to lose right now. So I, they won't be able to kill me, I think. Even if they draw a four card, the difference... Uh, they would draw a 4, so plus 1, that would be 5. I defend for 3, I would lose 2 stamina. So let's see what they draw. They draw a 3. Okay, that's good. So 3 plus 3 plus 1. Uh, sorry, 3 plus 1, and I defend for 3, so I lose 1 stamina. They did not manage to kill me. Okay, so that was their attempt at assassinating me. Um, what else happens at the end of the year? So we remove 1 famine token from each of the regions. That means that this famine is gonna go. Okay, so that was not bad. Um, what else happens? We get our victory points based on the happiness track. So we look at the track, it's on two. So we get two measly victory points. That's really not much. Not great. Uh, I really need to do better on the next turn. And uh, yeah, that's the end of the year. That's uh, done. So this is gonna go down. There we go. We check to see if our hand, uh, we are surpassing our uh, card limit. It's four right now because of this forum card. We're not. So we're starting another year. Oh, by the way, you, we have to clear the grain because we used it to feed the people. Uh, that's it. Let's go on and start another year.